Hey guys, so last week we dove deep into the story of Nutella, what it is, where it came from, and most importantly, how to make a simple version of it at home. And while that was already pretty good, it was also kind of warm up. As I mentioned, I bought a big bag of real high-end Italian hazelnuts because I wanted to follow up with a video where I make gourmet Nutella, but in fact I ended up with something a little bit different maybe. And here's why. Most ideas I first had to make some kind of gourmet version of Nutella involved adding something extra. And a lot of great ideas came from you guys. Some of the more popular suggestions included adding citrus, adding chilies, maybe even adding savory or salty elements. But simply adding something else on top of things, it just didn't seem right to me. It seemed too easy. And then I had an idea. I think it's safe to say the most classic way to eat Nutella is to spread it on a piece of toast. I mean, it's on the jar. So why not turn things around? And that's how I ended up with the inverted Nutella toast, which is dark cacao milk toast topped with what's basically white chocolate and hazelnut Nutella. I haven't actually tasted it yet, but I'm very excited to do so. We're gonna do that together at the end of the video, but I did wanna share the process of cooking it because there's a lot of cool stuff I think we can all learn from it. And by that I mean uh, I made the mistake, so you don't have to. So let's start with the chocolate sandwich bread. I'm just gonna be using a base recipe for Japanese shokupan, which is my favorite type of sandwich bread, and I'm gonna add some cacao powder into it. And the thing that makes shokupan so special is also the first cool thing we can learn, which is the so-called tangjong method. You take a small amount of your wheat flour and mix that with what seems like quite a lot of cold water. And once it's dissolved, you carefully heat it up and let it gelatinize and turn into a paste. This is our so-called tangjong. And you want to let this cool down for a little bit to fully set. Now, what's so special about this method? Well, it's basically a way to make water less liquid, if that makes any sense. We're gonna mix this paste into our dough later on, and what that is gonna do is it's gonna make the dough very easy to work with, you know, not too wet, even though it does contain quite a lot more water than it might feel like. The rest of the shokpan recipe is actually pretty straightforward, so let me just save us some time and roll the montage. <sighs> I think this is some very handsome and promising bread. I mean, just imagine peanut butter on chocolate bread. I'd be down for that. Or what about white Nutella? Which actually brings us to the part of the video that didn't quite go as planned. I'll explain, but first let me introduce some of the more unusual ingredients I'll be using for this recipe. First and foremost, there were these really high quality hazelnuts from Piedmont in Italy that I ordered online. Okay, you know what? I decided to perform a spontaneous taste test. These cost a lot. So I'm very excited to see how they taste. Very nice hiss. Steve would be proud. Well, here they are. Original Piemont hazelnuts. Are they actually any good? Let's find out. Mm. Yep. Oh, yes. Yeah, they're good. I can promise you they have a lot more flavor than the regular ones I get at the supermarket. They're all very like uniformly toasted and there are no bad hazelnuts. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about when you eat hazelnuts and there's that one kind of like off hazelnut and this is not gonna happen with those. Delicious, I am super pumped to be working with these. Next we have cocoa butter. Cocoa is itself about 50% fat and this is just that fat. At fridge temperature, this just looks like a solid block of like vegetable shortening or something, but when you taste a little bit, it actually has a very nice layer of deep chocolatiness to it. Next, there is nut oil. I wanted to get hazelnut oil actually, but couldn't find any, so I went for walnut. It's pretty neutral, but it has a mild nutty note to it. I think it would actually do really well in salad dressings. Okay, then there is lecithin powder. I know this is a bit like 
Breaking Bad, maybe? <laughs> but this is actually a natural substance you can extract from a lot of foods like sunflowers, soybeans, or egg yolks. This is actually the very first time in my life I'm using lecithin, but I know you can do a lot of really cool things with it. But in this case, we'll be using it to stabilize the emulsion in our Nutella, and it's also gonna prolong the shelf life of the final product. And speaking of powders, there's also our good old milk powder. Why powder, you might ask? Well, it's because we can get the milk flavor and the milk sugar without adding extra water, which would definitely mess with the texture of our Nutella. Now let's move to flavorings. And the first is instant espresso powder. Adding a very small amount of this is always a neat little trick when you want to enhance like a chocolate or a roasty aroma. And last but not least, vanilla beans. The vanilla aroma they bring is so much more nuanced and interesting than the kind of like dull sweetness you get from a low quality extract. You can just split them down the middle and carefully scrape out the pasty insides, which contain a ton of flavor. The rest of the stuff I'm using needs no further introduction. But before we start grinding, let's address something very important. In my last video, the biggest issue I had with the homemade Nutella was actually the texture. It was it wasn't quite smooth enough, but you guys definitely helped me solve this one in the comments. It kind of comes down to using the right tool. If you want perfectly smooth nut butter or Nutella, there's no way around it. You're gonna either need like a super high power food processor, and not even those are gonna like do the trick 100%. The ideal solution is something called a wet grinder, also called a conch or a melanger, I believe. This tool is very common in chocolate making for grinding cocoa, but it's also used in other cuisines, for example, in India. The thing is, I really didn't want to get one. And why? Because I really don't like when recipes only work if you like use this one super specialized piece of equipment. So I decided to try something completely different, and I'm not sure if that was a good idea. First, I started by adding my peeled and toasted hazelnuts into a regular food processor. To kind of make the flavor a bit more interesting, I also added a few almonds and macadamia nuts. Now, last time, I just started grinding at this point, but this time, I followed some of your comments and added granulated sugar and a bit of salt to the mix. The idea is that these should work as a sort of abrasive and help grinding the nuts from the inside, so to speak. Oh, and another thing you guys said can help is adding a bit of oil. So now felt like the right time to add a bit of walnut oil. And then, you know, keep grinding, keep scraping the sides and grinding again until the nuts eventually turn almost liquid. Then go in with the lecithin powder, espresso powder, milk powder, and of course, vanilla. And then quickly mix to combine everything. Finally, I slowly drizzled all of my melted cocoa butter with the food processor running until I got a homogenous mix. Everything was still very liquid, which is tricky because of course it will firm up a lot as the fat cools, but the bigger issue was sugar. First of all, there wasn't enough of it. I definitely needed to add more, but more importantly, I could definitely still feel all the crunchy sugar crystals. Anyway, one problem at a time. First, I added more sugar, but of course in the powdered form, much better. And my theory was that the sugar couldn't dissolve in the oily substance around it, so I decided to add a little bit of water. I did that the last time as well, because this kind of helps to get a smoother texture in your Nutella because of the way things emulsify, so I thought it's gonna be a double win, right? Well, <laughs> it almost was, except I forgot to follow my own advice. Stupid. At first, things seemed to go well. My mixture got nice and creamy, but as I kept processing, without really realizing it soon enough, my entire beautiful emulsion broke. This is literally every cook's nightmare. Broken emulsions are really hard to recover from, sometimes impossible. Before we added water, we could grind and mix as much as we want. But once you introduce water to the mix, the chemistry changes a lot. And then you gotta be careful. And you know, by over mixing after the addition of water, I caused like the fats and the oils to separate from, I guess, the solids. All the nice high-end ingredients seem to have gone to waste. I frantically started Googling how to fix a broken nut butter emulsion, but no luck. I was so close to calling it a day and just scrapping the entire video, but then, but then I remembered 
I had one last chance. But in this case, we'll be using it to stabilize the emulsion in our Nutella. So I brought back the lecithin powder, dissolved it in some sparkling water for some reason, don't ask, and then just by hand, started sort of folding it into my broken Nutella. Lecithin normally does its magic very, very fast and doesn't need a lot of work. And look at that, we're back, baby. It did indeed save my Nutella. On the risk of losing everything again, I decided to add another little kick of amaretto, which is fancy for almond liqueur. And after a few very quick and careful pulses, it was time to reap the rewards. Well then, it's time to taste, I would say. I'm not really sure what to expect of the white Nutella, but I can tell you that I am very intrigued by the chocolate bread. Ooh. This paste, it gets pretty solid in the fridge and pretty liquid in the middle of summer. So, you know, no way to win with that one, I guess. Oh my God. Well then, if that's not an inverted Nutella sandwich, then I don't know what is. It smells really, really nice. It smells very, let's taste. <laughs> Intense. Mm. You know what? It's interesting, but it's not that great. I mean, it's nuts, sugar and fat, so it's not going to be bad, but you know, I kind of expected more. Okay, here's the thing. The texture is kind of better, but it's also kind of not better this time. And what I mean by that is uh, adding the sugar to the nuts while grinding them helped to grind the nuts, but now we have undissolved sugar crystals in the paste. And that kind of and it gives the spread like almost a crunchy texture, which is like, honestly, not too bad, but a little bit weird. I feel like this would work much better as frosting on a cake and not as a spread. But yeah, on all other aspects, I mean, flavor, pretty good. Very, very hazelnutty. I love the addition of a tiny little bit of espresso, which definitely helped kind of, you know, amplify the toasty roastiness. Vanilla was great. Amaretto was great. I think in terms of taste, this is pretty good, but not like exquisite. And I'd also suggest if you try to make this, uh, definitely like cut back on the cocoa butter. It's not well balanced. It's like this like thick carpet of cocoa butter flavor and it's a bit much. But speaking of cocoa, I actually want to further examine the cocoa bread because I wasn't sure about that. So here's a fresh slice. Let's taste that one. Okay, just a bit of cocoa bread. Hmm, pretty nice. But it's missing sweetness. I think if you're adding cocoa powder to bread, you need to amp up the sweetness and also the fat, which kind of makes me think I probably should have gone for a brioche. Hmm. I don't really know what to do with this. I still like the peanut butter on chocolate toast idea. Maybe a PB&J on chocolate toast. Hmm, now we're getting there. Even though this one did not turn out like super perfectly and amazing, I think there's still a lot to learn from the entire process for me for sure, and I hope also for you. And I definitely wanna thank all of you guys for all the amazing suggestions in my last video. That definitely helped a lot during research. And you know what? That was a lot of like chocolate and sweet stuff in the past couple of weeks. So I'm looking forward to finally working on something savory again for the next video. And I hope to, you know, See you there.